All right, so today we're looking at the paper called Perception Encoder. The best visual embeddings are not at the output of the network from MetaFair Labs. As the title directly suggests, the main thing the authors are claiming is that when you train a vision encoder with contrastive learning, the best features for downstream tasks aren't actually at the final layer, like everyone assumes. They're hidden somewhere in the middle of the network. So they build this perception encoder family that tries to fix this by aligning these hidden features to the output. They have three main contributions here. First, they build PECOR, which is basically a really strong clip style contrastive model that works on both images and videos. Second, they show that different tasks actually prefer features from different intermediate layers, language tasks like one layer, spatial tasks like another. And third, they introduce alignment methods to pull these good features up to the output so you can actually use them. Let me explain how they build PE Core first. They start with a pretty standard clip setup, but add a bunch of modifications to make it more robust. They use progressive resolution training, where they start at 98 by 98 pixels and work their way up to 448. They switch to the LAM optimizer, which lets them use a much higher learning rate, and they add 2D rotary position embeddings, attention pooling instead of just using the class token, and heavy data augmentation. Now here's where it gets weird. They train this thing on 5.4 billion image text pairs, which is a lot but not crazy by today's standards. Then they build this video data engine where they use their own model plus some other captioning models to generate synthetic captions for 22 million videos. The really cool part is when they analyze what's happening inside the network where they test frozen features from every layer on different downstream tasks. For detection and depth estimation, the best features are around layer 40. For visual QA, it's earlier. For tracking, it's around layer 30. The last layer is almost never the best, which goes against what everyone assumes about these models. So why does this happen? They dig into it and find that around layer 33, these global tokens start appearing. Basically, some tokens in the image start aggregating information from everywhere else and all the other tokens start attending to them. This is useful for semantic tasks but ruin spatial tasks like tracking that need local information. To fix this, they introduce two alignment methods. For language alignment, they take layer 47 of PCOR and connect it to a language model with a projector, and then they train this on 70 million multimodal samples. The key is they are not using the last layer, they are using an intermediate layer that has better features for language tasks. For spatial alignment, it's trickier. They want to keep the semantic information, but also preserve spatial locality, so they do this weird dual teacher distillation. First teacher is the model's own layer 41 features, which preserves semantics. Second teacher is SAM2's mask predictions, but not its features. They use SAM's actual mask logits as pseudo features, because those maintain better locality than SAM's internal representations. The results are pretty strong. Pecor beats Siglip 2 and other models on zero-shot image classification and retrieval. And when they adapt it to language models, Pelang outperforms specialized vision encoders like AIM v2 and InternVid. Also, for spatial tasks, PE Spatial gets state-of-the-art detection performance with a much simpler decoder than usual. But there are some limitations they don't really talk about. First, this whole alignment process requires knowing which tasks you care about ahead of time. You can't just have one model that works for everything. You need PE Lang for language tasks and PE Spatial for spatial tasks. Also, while they show this intermediate layer phenomenon exists in other models like Dino V2 and AIM V2, they don't really explain why contrastive training would produce good spatial features in the first place. Clip is trained to match images to text globally. Why would it learn local spatial correspondences? They kind of hand wave this by saying their training modifications help, but it's not super convincing. My take is that this is solid engineering work that produces good models, but the theoretical understanding is lacking. 
The insight about intermediate layers is valuable, and the alignment methods are practical solutions, but it feels like they stumbled onto this behavior rather than designing for it. The fact that you need separate models for different task types also suggests this isn't quite the unified solution they're pitching.